Hello and welcome to this Open RAN panel that we titled Full Open RAN, the key drivers and dilemmas of deploying and managing at a scale. Over the next minute, we are going to get insights about what is the current status of Open RAN and in which states is the adoption of Open RAN solutions. We are so excited of having with us two fantastic guests, Jane Ryder, uh, head of dedicated wireless networks and Edge Cloud at Nokia. Hello, Jane. Hello. And Paco Martin, head of Open RAN at Vodafone Group. Uh, hello, Paco. Hi, hi. Hi, everyone. Thank you. Thank you both for, for being here. Um, we decided to invite you only to guests, uh, to have more like, um, like a dialogue, a conversation between both of you to make sure that you have enough time to make your points, because sometimes, you know, we, we have, when we have several panelists, it's not that easy to, to make your point. Um, but first of all, I, I want to set the scene about um, what we can understand by, by open RAN. I, I guess everybody understands, and the audience, and you guys, of course, what is open RAN. But, but for me, if I have to define um, what is open RAN, I would say that it's a more open radio access network architecture. It brings uh, open and, and, and standardized interfaces between the different RAN elements. In a nutshell, um, Open RAN is about uh, building a more diverse RAN vendor landscape. This means operators can choose the best solution providers for each company if they want, in order to build a RAN network that fits their needs best. Okay, that's a little bit like the mix and match feeling that we are having bigger. But um, let's let's go into into the questions. And, and as I said, I want this like an open debate, a dialogue. We are only three of us, so. Um, and Jen, I, I have the first question for you, which is uh, where are mobile operators deploying up and around global from, from your point of view, from Nokia point of view? What are you seeing there? Yeah, I think I think um, in order to answer that question, we actually need to divide up what do we mean with how far open RAM is, right? Because um, in the market, as you said, opening up a network can happen both in terms of interfaces, but also in terms of separating hardware and software in a traditional radio network. And from that perspective, there is, I would say we're not on the same path. So when I talk about cloud RAN, it's really where I separated the, the software in the baseband from the hardware compute, um, compared with opening up the interfaces, front hall, uh, SMO interfaces, everything that comes with that. And the, the path for both is happening at very different speeds. Both of them comes with, with the, you know, different set of challenges in terms of how do we integrate what we're now taking apart. Um, but but if we look at a cloud RAN as a first step, we see cloud RAN in the market. Um, I would say North America is, is definitely part. We've seen in Asia over the last many years and, and where we're also looking at probably the initial phase of is it really cloud RAN or is it more like a baseband hotel? But these have existed, but without being cloud RAN that is also fulfilling the open RAN expectations. Whereas the open RAN expectations, I would say, how far are they and how many interfaces do we have interlocked and, and can we actually go on with the next step of that? That is definitely not as far, um, mainly because of the maturity of how do we do interoperability testing? How do we make sure that when you take things apart, we get performance also when we put them back together? So, so having said that, Around the world, lots of activities, both in cloud RAN and in the open interfaces. But for both parts, I would say um, commercialization of the two, cloud RAN is further ahead than the open RAN in terms of open interfaces, where we see yet that there's work to be done, both in terms of trialing, but also actually to get the systems working together when you combine two ends of one interface, right? It has to work. So, um, the path is still ongoing. I would say great progress, but um, it's still work to be done. Thanks, Ian. And, and Paco, um, from, from Vodafone, uh, where are you uh, right now as part of this up and run uh, journey? Um, thank you, Ignacio, and great to be here today with Jane. Uh, let, let me first uh, say something on a on, uh, first question. And okay. uh, from Jane, I think I, I, I agree. We are one of the points is maturity. Um, I, 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 I also uh, agree that uh, we have different paths for, for the cloud part, uh, virtualization, and then opening interfaces. Um, in the opening interfaces, uh, 
uh, yeah, we have a list of them. I think the key ones are already um, defined and uh, for the most part already there. Uh, we have some integrations already done, but I think in terms of the overall timing for both uh, tracks to be ready, I would say that uh, from a couple of years uh, from today, um, there, there will be a, a no difference between a, a open run cloud solutions and, and and traditional. So that would be my take. So taking this in in into account, uh, we this de decided to uh, put a very clear plan uh, for Vodafone. We want to have uh, thirty percent of our network uh, being open run by twenty thirty. Uh, that means actually, uh, well, that that's current current figure today. Current figure we provided uh, already a few months back in Mobile World Congress. We are uh, working to increase that figure, but we are working against that plan, which means that uh, we are already preparing uh, commercial negotiations and commercial contracts to, to, to happen around 2025. And to get there at the right, um, uh, with the right situation, you need to have a proven that open run can be an option. So we have uh, deployed and we are announcing uh, more more trials and, and deployments now uh, to get there. Our flagship project is uh, the deployment in Vodafone UK that's already underway. Uh, we're going to be doing a, a deployment also in Urban, then Urban next year. So Massive MIMO will be there. And uh, just uh, last week, we announced uh, another trial and, and later deployment in Germany. So things are happening. And uh, yeah, we are pushing for uh, speeding up. Yeah, thank you, Paco. Thank you, Jane. And I think it's a good point what you just mentioned that um, uh, even for us, for, for Red Hat, maybe we are more focused on the cloudification of the RAN rather than in the open RAN. But we can see that these two movements, uh, the cloudification of the RAN and the open RAN, they are merging in a certain way. But you are, yeah, you are right. So maybe the cloudification of the RAN, for whatever reason, it's slightly ahead of uh, building and standardizing several um, mm -hmm. standards and interface there. You're, you're right there. Okay, I have um, another question for you guys. Um, Jane, is, this is going to be, I mean, Paco and Jane, I'm going to try to uh, set who's going to talk first, but uh, please, uh, yes, yes, make sure that uh, you can you can jump into this with no no problem. It's about what are the strategies of integrating Open RAN in the evolution of, of RAN deployments? And, and with here, I want to I want to be clear. So it's very, and it's easier to go with the open run, maybe if you have a green, if you are a greenfield operator. But what happens when you are a brownfield, when you have already your existing traditional run, and you want to start thinking about how you're going to deploy your open run? So, uh, Jane, maybe we can start with you. Yeah. So, so again, I think there's there's two parts to it. So, uh, first of all, with the open interfaces, how do we ensure that they don't become an an extra path, right? Because the the evolution has to be so that we we have one view of radio access networks over the future, right? So for us in, in Nokia, we look at it, for instance, open front hole, coming back to the interfaces. A, that is not something that is only because that you want ORAN. It has to be part of what we do in our normal product. So you can say ORAN is not a separate product stream. It's the same part that we have. And then saying, what can we fulfill that is then open um, and, and do that within it? So that's that's the first part. We've been very clear of saying that we cannot have either open interfaces or a cloudified RAN to be separate because then we, we, we lose the scale that we do need to have in radio, right? So we're not going to be able to deploy around the world unless we all uh, cohere to the free PP or unless we do the, the, the parts. And that's also very much true when you then look at the cloud RAN side. If networks, at least in the beginning, they're not going to be 100% cloud, right? There is a, uh, we can go back and talk a lot about fiber challenges and, and everything that comes with it, saying where's the right place to deploy cloud RAN to begin with, and where do you have the fiber available that is needed for the cloud RAN? Well, in that case, I need to make sure that the application, so the baseband software itself, is the same whether I deploy, choose to deploy on a cloud RAN with open interfaces or I deploy on a classic part that might be backhauled with microwaves and, and everything else, um, but that also has open interfaces. So I need to, from that perspective, our forward path is really to make sure that whatever we make of baseband software and how we do the RUs that fits with it, that we have the view that the world will be mixed 
this hybrid world across it also drives then the evolution of what we need to do. So it doesn't become, oh, this only works in a, a greenfield corner of, uh, of a world, because to be honest, there's not too many greenfields left in the world but where this would make sense, right? And, um, and we also need to be, I think, very cost conscious about the requirements. And again, I'll come back to my transport part, right? Because otherwise we'll make dreams for something that is actually going to, not going to be fulfilled, uh, especially if we look in countries where there's a lot less fiber than maybe the ones we are sitting in um, between the three of us today, right? Yeah, all right. Thank you, Jane. Um, Paco, what, what is your point of view here in terms of this mixing of brownfield, greenfield, and how we can introduce open run here? We we have uh, you know we have a lot of experience in uh, uh, upgrading networks and and doing swaps and operating and uh, also you know uh, mistakes in the past, but uh, I think we have a clear strategy to um, um, have consistency and and the same approach when, when we deploy in a network. So we will not be doing pepper potting. We will not be doing overlays. So we, we, do, we want to uh, have a same, same supplier um, um, in, in, the, in the same area of the network. Uh, we actually uh, came up with the idea of a single RAM many years ago, and that's what we are trying to do with Open RAM as well. So when we deploy, it will be uh, with the same solution in a given area, no overlays. Um, as much as possible um, and and uh, we will deploy that way but i think apart from the the short term or the mid term um, for us the way to bring open run in in the networks is a it's a gradual is a grad, gradual smooth process where um over time uh, there is as, as uh, just one way of the of doing radio and deploying radio that is a single run and that that means that uh, there is no two development path for traditional radio and then cloud and then adding open interfaces on top. So three areas, it's just one. It's just uh, a one development uh, uh, track. So uh, it's important that we not only work with the so-called new uh, open RAM vendors, but we have strong partnerships uh, with the traditional suppliers. And I'm, I'm very glad to uh, to say that uh, last week we also announced uh, during the F F Fuse event in Madrid uh, that um, uh, Nokia and, and Vodafone are, are working together towards uh, um, a path for open run, full open run solution, and and and, and that's very good news, and we, we are very happy about this this partnership. Thanks, thanks, Paco. Next question is also for you, and you understand why. It's about. Um, uh, from from mobile operators' point of view, what are you getting or expecting the the, the benefit the most? It's about um, TCO. It's about reducing the cost of of, of network thanks to Open RAN, or it's also about a, a technically uh, evolution or even uh, innovation. What do you think will be, or maybe some mix of both? Uh, but but Paco, from from your point of view, from what <laughs> point of view, what do you think? Yeah. What are you expecting from from Open RAN? Yeah, it's probably always a mix of everything. But uh, in the short term, the the first benefit we are getting is uh, to avoid the vendor lock-in, which is a lesson that the industry has learned um, in 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 the in the past few 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 months and years. Uh, we don't want to be uh, locked into with one single supplier. So open run will allow uh, for diversification and and uh, you know wider ecosystem. So that that's. That's, uh, I would say, the most immediate benefit. But then, uh, cost is a cost. Cost parity is a is a kind of the situation we have today. But the, there is a um, there is the idea and, and and where we are putting towards having a, a lower cost uh, for open run than, than for traditional way of doing radio. And that that's something that's going to take uh, still a um, a few years, um, it's, it's going to have to uh, mature and, and innovations will have to be materialized. Uh, when it comes to innovation, I think uh, um, there, there are two con contributors for that. One is uh, the fact that you have more modularity and disaggregation will allow for innovations to come uh, earlier and to be adopted earlier. Uh, but also Open Run is, is allowing for new architecture where you have uh, applications that can be plugged into the radio. I'm talking about the radio intelligent controller. 
um, we still need to prove that uh, there are there are wow uh, use cases for for that platform. Uh, but it's uh, yeah, it's in the plan. Um, let's see. But uh, as I said at the beginning, it's a bit of both. A bit of both. Yeah, and, and I think also it's about economy and scales. We are starting at the early beginnings of open RAN. So think about that. We are going to have this, the super savings at the beginning. Sounds not very, uh, let's say, uh, realistic from from my point of view. Jane, I don't know if you want to uh, add any any comment here. Yeah, I, I was um, I was actually going to say exactly the part of saying when we now. It, if we want to get the modularity, what we also need to achieve from it is elasticity. Elasticity on how the services are being deployed and how we can then use the benefits, for instance, of the cloud of scalability, not only up, but also down, right? So how can we make sure that we don't just replace something that works for something else where we will suddenly have a lot more integration parts for it? So I think that's for me one part, but then coming back to the um, the view of, of is it technical is it, it has to be all of it right we have to work together to solve the problems but be conscious about the fact that we are now breaking up things and if we look at the 3dpp world since 1992 we spend as an industry packing things in and making a silo of the radio access networks right and now we need to break it up so it's something that cannot happen in in all our different silos in the industry because when we break up it requires collaboration. Otherwise, there would be no benefits. OK, thank you. Um, OK, another question. Um, what are the top two, three challenges uh, that you are seeing, or even blockers, uh, that maybe they are um, stalling or delaying uh, the progress of, of Open RAN? And let's start, uh, maybe, yeah. Uh, what what yeah, are you seeing that telcos are telling you? So, so for, for me, the biggest part is actually the integration. So you can say when I come, when I come as Nokia and you go to my lab and I have the RU, I have a baseband, I control the compute, I am, you know, the whole stack is mine. I can also optimize the whole stack. At the moment that as soon as you, you break that stack up, which is basically what we're trying to do in both hardware, software, but also interfaces, of course, what comes out of, you can say, my R&D lab is not pre-tested with anything, right? Because how can I test something I don't know what is? So the integration, I don't know if it's a, we can say it's a challenge, but it's an effort. So where is that effort sitting and how do we acknowledge as an industry that this requires effort? Because that is normally what I do in the R&D lab. So I think that's one thing that we, uh, both in terms of, of pure technical work, but also how long does it take? the time to do this. So I think that's a, for me, one of the first parts. The second part that comes afterwards is related to the same, but life cycle management. How do we do life cycle management in a world where um, is not only one pipeline, right? Whether we're talking CICD pipelines or we're talking uh, even just changing uh, parts, how do we manage that as again, for me, it comes down to partnerships and it comes down to how, how do we ensure that we don't create a bigger integration mess than, than, uh, than what we can solve together. All right. Thanks, Jane. Paco, I think you're going to agree there, <laughs> but uh, I want to I hear your boy. Yeah, definitely. I think, uh, I think it's very important that we ensure we have rollouts uh, happening. The ecosystem uh, of supply is already there for open RAM, but uh, you really need to show that money can flow into the system and uh, pay back all those investments. Um, also, innovation is important. We, we have, as we said before, the opportunity to reduce the cost uh, for TCO and also for the RIC, but we need to materialize on those opportunities. And lastly, I would say there is still a, in the short term a maturity challenge where we need to make sure that open rank can deliver at the same uh, quality that we have um, enjoyed in the radio for many years because it, this is not about compromise. Okay, that is a good point. And going back to to this, um, I have another question, another, uh, which is what is the role that the, the labs and maybe the system integrators are, are going to take? in this um in this open open round journey uh, to make sure that uh, we are going to have this cohesion that uh, that jane maybe you were mentioned when when it comes to to do the r d 
uh, when you have this multi-vendor approach or, or landscape. And um, Jen, let's start with you. Yeah, so, so I think based also what, what Paco said, right, this is absolutely key because if we don't get the collaboration to work, then it is just another black box plus a black box and who's then responsible for making sure that these two um, and now again, some of you know me well enough to say that I always talk about uh, what we have in Danish, right? But but if I took, take two Lego blocks, how do I make sure that I create a castle? Because we do come from the world where things have been monolithic toys in that sense. And now we need to put, make a, the modularity of the world create still the same end result. We need to have the castle in order to have it. So if we don't have collaboration, if we don't have integration labs, if we don't have um, even R&D collaboration, like Paco referred to, that what are we now doing together on on the lower layers? What we need to do on on opening RIC interfaces? All of this is not something that one can do on our own. So we will not get the innovation. We will not get to the common end result unless collaboration is there. And collaboration needs to have a place to live. Whether we in a cloud world talk about that we have a sandbox or um, or that we need to continue for some of the open RAN parts, what is the physical interfaces, right? So I need to have a place to try it out, to see how can we learn together. And, and therefore, the labs, the collaboration, the integration efforts has to be jointly, and we have to take the learnings from there because we cannot learn our own, on our own. Thanks, thanks, Jane. Um, and Paco, from your point of view? Yeah, I, I agree. I think collaboration is the key part, key part when we talk about uh, integration. It's impossible that uh, we replicate, um, you know, traditional integration labs in, in in every market, in every operator. We need to make sure that we leverage on each other. And uh, it's a challenge. I think the next uh, 12 months are going to be key uh, for us to uh, define how to tackle this. But uh, um, it's, uh, it's certainly the key point. I think uh, for doing this, we will have to have also help from some uh, system integrators, some companies. In, in, uh, in our thinking and for Vodafone, we don't think that we will be giving uh, system integrators the full responsibility for everything uh, because that would be uh, going into the principle of avoiding lock-in. We don't want to change a big traditional supplier for a big SI. So, um, the model will be uh, shared, uh, shared responsibility, and and that we, in our case, we want to be uh, accountable for the system integration part of the network we deploy. But we want to offer our learnings and share with others. Uh, that's why we have also um, agreed a collaboration with Ocomo, who we think is one of the big players in the industry to to play uh, uh, to play the you know this game and understand how system integration needs to be done and, and share with the others. I uh, fully agree with Jane. I think it's all about collaboration. Thank you. So it's clear integration, collaboration is key if we want to move forward. Good. All right. Um, another question that I have for you. Um, Jane, again, let's start with you. It's about um, have you identified any cultural related issues or barriers uh, with regards to the RAM transformation? And, and let me be more clear. It's about when when you are talking with, with the different part with the different clients about Open RAN and Cloud RAN. Uh, what is the the first reaction? They are they are like Vodafone maybe that they are in, into that and they they love it, or they are slightly more conservative and they want to slow down these a little bit more to see what are the the real uh, let's say benefits and outcome of of Open RAN. What what are you seeing from from your conversation with with the clients? I, I would I would definitely say that it depends on who I'm talking with, right? Because if I come and you said collaboration and integration and if we put cloud on top. And if I enter a normal radio procurement team and I say this, a, they're the, the please just deliver the full performance of the silo that I've known for 30 years. So that conversation is often very short unless you start from something else. If I then at the same time, and I will be honest here and saying that if I enter the same uh, customer, but in the cloud office, so I address the cloud team. Then uh, uh, it's a very, very different mindset. But then we need to have a lot of discussion on what does real time mean? Because I cannot uh, do open RAN. I cannot, cannot do a cloud RAN uh, perspective unless I understand what is the implications of doing uh, front hall interfaces, uh, real time um, 
and I mean real time low, layer one uh, communication in the radio side. So again, I think that the biggest, the, the, I think there's two cultural things in these conversations that puts barriers on wherever we talk. One is where cloud means meets real time layer one acceleration discussions, right? That's that's the first part. And the second part is uh, if you've been working in something that has been a monolithic performance game for 30 years and you start saying, oh, but I want to address that layer and that interface and all of it together, um, then it becomes a different discussion, right? So I would say that we have, there is mindsets out there we definitely need to, to change and we need to continue, but that's part of the collaboration. It's not going to happen overnight, right? Um, and I think from a cloud perspective, what is it? 10, 12, back 12 years ago that Vodafone and Nokia started working on virtualization of core, right? And and how far and, and what is missing in core today? There's still many places that cloud core is not existing, right? So it's mm. it's a long journey, but we need to start it. Otherwise, we'll never get the end. Thanks, Jan. Paco, from your side. Yeah, I agree. I agree. It takes it takes time. I think um, I would I would not say there are cultural differences or anything like that. I think it's it's more I think it's na natural adoption of, of of new technology when when it comes to the supply part. Some companies uh, started this trend, uh, like an innovator trying to disrupt the ecosystem to gain some advantage. Some of the companies are just resisting and they still say that no way, open run is not gonna, going to happen. And the same happens when you see uh, the demand part and you talk with operators and even inside an operator. Some uh, organizations are eager to jump. Uh, some others are, you know, uh, asking more questions. Imagine you are, if you are in operations, for example, um, you are a bit concerned about this, this change. So you want to know uh, what's coming. Uh, but I think it's just the natural a natural process that we have seen of, uh, you know, for the, for adopting a new technology, um, not particularly linked to open run being open run. Okay, we are almost finishing. I want to just uh, for in thirty seconds from from your side, uh, Paco Jane, if um, if you want to share any lesson with those uh, mobile operators that are now starting the the, the the lovely open run journey, what should be the lesson learned, the message that you want to share with them? So for me, the 30 seconds is start with mindset and start with this life cycle management discussions. The technology will solve, right? But but don't start with the technology and find out later how you're actually going to handle it in operations and integration. Thanks, Jan. And Paco, from your side. Yeah, for me, the, the one, one key message is that open run is going to happen, is out of question. Um, so it's now the time to start working on it. And the way to do it is to um, reach out to some of the ones that uh, have been um, pioneering the technology. So please feel free uh, to contact because it's impossible for 500 operators out there in the world to, to, to go through the same journey. So we need to collaborate and we are happy to share uh, our collaboration. And also, um, I encourage you to go and see one of the uh, initial tools that we have put together, the Tip Academy together with uh, uh, Accenture uh, going live to help you um, get in the right learning, the right knowledge. So uh, have a look at it. It's a big effort. We, we, we want to make sure that everybody learns uh, from uh, what we've done so far. Lovely. Um, Jane Paco, thank you so much for your insights. Um, and for all of you, I hope the session made your expectations. Thank you so much for watching and goodbye. Bye-bye, guys. Thank you, Thank Nathaniel. You. Thank you, Jane. Thank you for having me.